our d director here, uh, Mike. All I want you to do is you're going to throw a one-two combination with the hands. Easy, one-two. And then so you're going to go left, right, back, left round kick up at about chest level. Boom. Then you're going to reverse. You're going to go one, two, three. One, two, three, right round kick. Boom. Move around. One, two, boom. Left. One, two, three, right. One, two, left. Move around. One, two, three, right. That's what I see. We're going to go about 30 seconds and switch. Let the other side. Now, I don't want you taking time, taking gloves off, putting mitts on you, the kicking pads like that. So just hold your gloves nice and easy for the punches. So when the punch is on, I want you to just open your palms up like so. Again, no one's head's way over here and way over here. So kind of keep, keep a nice tight pattern. I've been saying tight pattern. Some of you people are not used to holding mitts. Be careful that, that when they hit, they don't hyperflex your elbow. So keep this hand slightly outside the shoulder and keep this elbow up. So if they do hit too hard, you can kind of roll with it and you're, uh, you don't damage this connective tissue. Because once you damage that connective tissue there, that's a permanent injury, folks. It's not like a bone or a torn muscle. That will never heal. Okay? Any questions? All right, now, throughout most of this entire class, you're going to be needing to work with a partner. If I got uh, odd numbers, please w try to pick a trio. I need as much space as possible. Work. If a couple of you want to get up there and play around the ring, that'll be fine. Any questions? All right, let's get started. Everybody get up. Pick a partner at any time. Listen up. If you have a question, just call my name out or kind of raise my hand to get my attention. Uh, listen up. There are a lot of my black belts on the floor here who can assist you as well. So if you got a question, feel free to ask anybody, OK? All right, let's go. Position. Now listen up. One side's going to go for about 30 seconds. You're going to be warming up. You're going to throw a one, two, left round kick, move around. Then a one, two, three, right round kick. Move around. One, two, left. One, two, three, right. All right, go for it. Just warm it up. Firing, you're the fighter. The other person is the coach. So you can switch back and forth from coach to fighter, from coach to fighter. Is that We're going through a sequence of five little simple steps that when you teach in your schools or you teach yourself, these are the five steps which I recommend that you try to use to best learn my system. Okay, I want to keep the technique simple. So you just basically want you to remember the structure that I'm showing you. First thing you always work on is you, you can do it in a shadow fighting contact. You work on developing the technique. Let's say, for example, I'm just doing a one, two, three combination, like one, two, three. And I just kind of move around and I just kind of get that technique down. That's step one called technique development. Second step, you want to work on your hitting skills. You ever get hitting skills? So second step, if we're doing something real simple like a one, two, three combination, let's do a cross jab. One, straight, back, left, up. So now he's hitting the mitts. Now as he's working on his hitting skills, he's working on his timing. Now in my system, I always say the holy grail of fighting is accuracy. Now, in a way, I do care if you are fast or if you can hit hard. But people who hit hard, people who are fast are a dime a dozen. People who have accuracy, and you can come here tomorrow night and watch the people fight. Count how many people miss their kicks, kicks that don't work. I mean, people miss their punches. Or when they land a punch, the punches that don't work. Accuracy. If you get accuracy, I'd like you to concentrate on this second step when you're working on your hitting skills. To think about rhythm and timing. Rhythm and timing. Speed does not give you accuracy. Power does not give you, make you a great fighter. The key to the whole thing, folks, is please remember these words. Rhythm. Out of rhythm, you develop timing. Okay? And then you add two other factors to that. You can add a little speed to that and what we call judgment. And that will produce the last thing, which is what we call accuracy. So now I'm thinking about rhythm. And I'm thinking about the sense of timing, timing, OK? All right. And timing, there's many aspects of timing. But just basically think about uh, acquiring that precise moment where you hit your a target, produce the maximum result. Now, he, that's a good definition. Now, here we go. That's not in the manual, is it? So I don't have to know it, do I? Thank you. Thank you. All right, here we go. So this is all I want you to work on. 
He's going to do a cross jab, straight right hand, back left hook, boom. We'll change up a little bit. All right. Then again, one, two, three, one, two, three, boom. And when he's working on these hitting skills, he's working on the sense of rhythm, so he's not going jerk, jerk, jerk. So in other words, you got one, two, three. He's going to flow, pop, pop, pop. Nice and easy, easy. Set up a little jab, you know. Then nice and easy, one, two, three. That makes what I mean by the rhythm. And out of that rhythm, he acquires that sense of timing, trying to time it where he hits the mitt perfectly. Everybody with me? All right, let's just do that so you remember the second drill. Position, a little one, two, three. Go for about 30 seconds and then switch on your own, okay? When you do a bench press, some of you guys lift weights. You should all be lifting weights, okay? All right. I've never had a headache, never had back problems because I lifted weights for six years before I started this up. I had the foundation, okay? Three of the top five fighters of all time, I'm not going to mention their names, have had hip replacement surgery. I hit the heavy bag more than all three of those guys put together. Got nothing wrong with the hips and 61 years old, all right? So there's a way of taking care of your body and training hard. And guys, I train hard, three and a half, five hours a day, 365 days a year. None of this one hour class nonsense. You didn't get warmed up in an hour, okay? All right, now watch. <clears throat> when you throw a bench press in the back of your shoulders here, okay? Underneath the trapeze as well. You have muscles called rumboids, kind of come up on an angle like that. You lock those rhomboids in place, then you lock the lats. Those are your stabilizer muscles. They stabilize the beginning of that bench press all the way through. Okay. So yes, I'm using my shoulder and the pectoral muscles and so forth, right? but my stabilizer muscles are the ones that really give me the backbone, the foundation of that, that lift. Same thing when you're punching. When you raise that shoulder, I've told you guys this before, when you raise that shoulder, you got a clavicle bone, scapula bone, that's part of what we call your shoulder girdle. All right, and some people call it your clavicle arch, or, or rather your cervical arch, okay, the top part is fine. So when I punch, I don't want that shoulder up. You can't do a heavy bench press when the shoulder's up. You can't do a heavy bench press when it's forward. No, nor can you do a lot of push-ups or heavy push-ups. So I want that shoulder down, locked into place. All right, now I've got power. Now when I punch, and I don't want to be tight. So if I got my shoulder up a little bit at the beginning of the punch, like I have now, as everybody see the shoulders up a little bit, as I begin the shoulder, please, when you punch, and I think Mr. Green covered this, rotate the hip through the center line before you begin moving that hand. See? As the hand begins to move, watch. The shoulder comes up, and it gets right behind the fist. So the palm of your hand is right dead center of your armpit. That's my line of power. Yes, my hand's not on my chin right now, but I'm halfway through punching. And suckers, when I'm punching, I'm not thinking about getting hit, okay? Hit me all you want, you're going to go down anyway, all right? So from this point all the way to the point of contact, see, I'm using that rumboids and my lats as part of my stabilizer muscles, everything else to relax. Just to make contact, see, I can squeeze the fist. Then on the end of the punch, I'll turn my thumb down a little bit, and as I make contact to follow through, she shifted weight into it. Well, they're straightening my front knee out, see, because when you... Extend your joints, you have power. Boom. Then the shoulder rolls up to protect my chin. Makes sense? Same thing on the left hook. Right apex of punch. Point of making contact. The shoulder's down. Got me? Why? Because I'm using my stabilizer muscles. Making contact here. As I complete the punch, see, follow through, right on the end of the punch, see the shoulder rising? Come up to protect the chin on the end of the left hook so you can't nail me with a, an uppercut. Make sense, folks? Okay. Plus, when you, you guys ever done that Tai Chi stuff, they teach you to <laughs> kind of center this pelvic diaphragm in here. All right. So all that is helping to stabilize that punch by bringing in those stabilizer muscles. So please, don't be punching like that with the shoulders up. Just kind of make your mouth so. Does everybody see it? All right. If I want to see that, I'll turn on a Tybo commercial or something, okay? <laughs> okay. All right. 